Hello, welcome to R&B Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing Jennifer's Body, starring Megan Fox and Amanda Seyfried. And uh, the premise for this movie is, um, it's written by Diablo Cody, who wrote Juno, and um, she, um, in this movie, uh, Jennifer is a high school student, and her friend Needy, played by Amanda Seyfried, are, um, they go to this concert at a local bar where this indie band is performing, they're called Low, Sh low Shoulder. And later on, um, Megan Fox's character, Jennifer, goes with the band and they end up sacrificing her in or to Satan in order to get a career going, you know, like in the occult. And from there, Jennifer begins to suck on the souls of men and eat their body and it turns, and it's, it's a pretty much a horror comedy, if you can call it that. Okay, Brendan, what are your thoughts on the movie? Well... You mentioned it's a horror comedy. It, it's more of a comedy to me than horror. There was almost no horror in there. I mean, there's some occult stuff they throw around, but there there was no really horror or suspense or reason to be scared. And the character of Jennifer, really, I didn't feel was as I don't know as intimidating as she should have been. I mean, she was just sort of like a bratty, overconfident high school girl. Yeah, um, now this is the first time I, I've, I've seen Megan Fox act, other than a one time I caught a glimpse of her on a, an episode of Two and a Half Men, but I've never seen the Transformer movies or her other film work, so having said that, I, I wasn't convinced by her acting-wise. I mean, I didn't, I don't know, there was just something about her, she just didn't seem good, very good to me. I mean, and one thing I noticed is that I think they were, this movie really tried to capitalize on the idea that pe of people thinking that she's hot. Like, they throw in the scene where she's swimming in the lake naked for no reason. And there's a scene, obviously, there's a lesbian kissing between her and Amanda Seyfried that I think was just thrown in there, too. So I think they're really trying to capitalize on that. Uh, yeah, it's almost seemed purely publicity because there's no nudity in this movie. And for, you know, a so-called horror movie, there's like almost, there's almost no blood in there. I mean, it's pretty tame, actually. I was kind of surprised. I mean, they kind of forget you're watching like a horror film for a while or that you're watching something that's rated R. Yeah, this film came across more as a parody to me than a, than a horror film because, like, there's a scene where uh, Amanda Siegfried is going to the door and she's talking to her boyfriend on the cell phone. There's that knock and then she opens the door and look, there's nobody there. And it, to me, it felt more like a parody. But the first 10 minutes was probably the only thing I really liked. The first 10 minutes takes place at a mental institution. I really liked that, and there's some voiceover work in there that was well written, but the dialogue here just wasn't... It just didn't always seem, you know, believable to me Like at times. Like, this is how people talk, you know? It definitely had its own sort of, uh, I don't know, trademark kind of thing. It was trying to be very cool and quirky, and sometimes it didn't come across, other times it did, and, that, yeah. you know, it was funny, but yeah. the the... The good things about this movie, though, I thought was uh, J.K. Simmons has a small role as a uh, he's in high so, school teacher. He's in so many movies lately. <laughs> and he's really good, too. And it shows even in movies that are kind of lackluster like this one, he still shines in it. And he has this Minnesota accent. He's got a wig and a hook for a hand. And he's really good. And yeah. So is the uh, indie band in this Low Shoulder. Who's oh, yeah. Lead singer is played by Adam, Adam Brody. Brody. Yeah, oh, he, he does was, a great job. He was great. I liked the band. He was really much. funny. I mean, his, I really liked the stuff at the band because they were just so seedy and they, they were just dicks. <laughs> that's, that's what they were. I would like to see a movie about them. I thought they were very interesting. Oh, yeah. I, I can imagine a movie where they're, they're an indie band. That, you know, and there's a funny line they threw in there where they're... Where they about the, before they sacrifice Megan Fox's character, there's a scene where there's a line where um, they say they talk about how hard it is to be an indie band and making it. That was there was there's a funny line in there, but I'd like to see a movie about them where it goes from being an indie band and they discover this occult thing and they figure, hey, why don't we use this to try to, um, you know become famous and then see how it goes from there? Because I think that would have been a more interesting movie. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. But you know this this movie when I was when I was watching it it wasn't that I couldn't really get into it it wasn't all too interesting to me I mean 
Megan Fox, yeah, she looks great, but she can't really act her way out of a wet paper bag if her life depended on it. Yeah, Amanda Seyfried was also fine. I thought she was fine in her role, but uh, you know, she just didn't seem as interesting. I thought she was more. I thought she was a little more believable. I thought she did a pretty good job playing sort of. But I, th I think if you've seen like '80s horror movies and stuff like that, then you've probably already seen this movie before with the whole high school teenagers kind of thing. I mean, it reminded me of something like The Faculty or Fright Night. Yeah. I mean, it, it wasn't anything really new, and, and this, although the stuff with the indie band I really liked, and the the basis for the movie is really good, but I kind of felt it wasn't executed in the best way, and, you know, the acting wasn't the best. Yeah. This uh, this director, this is, I think, her fourth, or third or fourth film she directed. She previously directed A on Flux with uh, Charlie Theron, and Diablo Cody, I gotta admit... I like Juno much better. I mean, even though in that film there were times I thought that the, she was trying too hard for the dialogue to sound quirky, sometimes for quirky sake, and trying too hard to sound cool, I thought it was a much better film, and I thought there was more to enjoy from that than from this film, you know? I, yeah, I mean, I think Juno is a much better film than this than this movie. I Yeah, I agree. I agree. I mean, um, I was kind of expecting something more from Diablo Cody, too. I mean... Like, she has some horror movie references in Juno, and I kind of thought, you know, she knows her stuff about horror, and this movie was kind of a letdown, you know? Mm -hmm. And she has some horror references in there, and uh, there's a cameo by Lance Hendrickson in, mm -hmm. in there, you know, for horror fans and fans of the TV show Millennium. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a great character actor. But when something like that in a movie jumps out at me is, like, the most interesting thing, then I don't think the movie's doing its And job. the music sounded like it came out of an 80s horror movie, too, and I liked that. You know, it felt more, the music felt more authentic than, let's say, The Informant. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, they had a lot of contemporary music in there, yeah. too, you know, which is, I have no problem with, but, you know, I think this movie just had a lot of promise, and ultimately it was kind of like a, it's kind of meh. It's, yeah. it's okay, I mean, you've, I mean, if you really want to see Megan Fox, just Google images, you don't need to pay to see this movie. Yeah, so you're going with Snuff It or Rent It? You know, if you really want to see this movie, go ahead and rent it, but, you know... After having seen it, I probably wouldn't. If I could go back, I wouldn't see it, probably. Okay. I would, so I would, I would probably have to lean towards Snuff It, but it wasn't a horrible movie, but it just wasn't wasn't that great. It wasn't anything special. Yeah, I'm going to go with Snuff It, too. I really didn't like that movie like I said, that much. There's some elements I like, like the band and J.K. Simmons and a, and the opening, the first ten minutes, I loved. It felt, the way it was shot it, and everything, it felt promised in the way a, it was lit. But... <laughs> After that, you know, it just the dialogue just didn't seem very believable because you know writing dialogue is not always easy. You know, one I went when I went to college, I took a script writing class, and the professor said in order to f figure out how people talk, a good script writer will go somewhere in public and listen in on people's conversation and see how they how they really talk. Because over time, people's way of speaking does change, and this one didn't always feel like you know I was. It felt like I wasn't always listening to high school students with this movie. You know. Yeah. So, all right. All right, it looks like we're both going with Snuff It on Jennifer's body. I didn't quite like it as much as I wanted to, but, um, yeah, if you like this movie or if you didn't like this movie, feel free to post any comments, and uh, we'll see you on the next edition of R&B Reviews.